Depending on who you listen to, as much as 90% of all small businesses will fail. Some say the numbers are lower, some actually say higher, but one thing is clear. It isn't easy to succeed in business, even if you do just about everything right. In the coming years, you can expect those numbers to skyrocket as people who are now starting businesses for all the wrong reasons find out that being an entrepreneur is not for snowflakes. The number of self-employed workers in the United States has risen by about a half a million since the beginning of the pandemic. Now, this is at a time when traditional employment is plummeting and job vacancies across the country are at an all-time high. Workers are leaving their jobs in droves and starting new businesses at a pace not seen in many years. Now, don't get me wrong. I think entrepreneurship is a nearly miraculous engine of capitalism. For the right person in the right circumstances, it's the closest thing to a bona fide get rich scheme that exists. Most of the working millionaires in the United States and in, in many parts of the world are self-employed. Starting a company can allow a person to bypass years of climbing the corporate ladder with more flexibility, more control, and better rewards. But it takes an enormous investment of energy, time, and sometimes money. It takes focus, attention to detail, and grit. You don't hear that word used very much these days, probably because it's so seldom employed, but, but grit means unyielding courage in the face of hardship or danger. Does this guy look like he has unyielding courage in the face of hardship? Among the reasons being given for this mass exodus from the traditional workplace include the following. Number one, afraid of COVID. <laughs> Does it seem to you that a person who is afraid of a disease that is less deadly to a healthy vaccinated person than the flu is going to exhibit unyielding courage in the face of hardship or danger. Second, need time to reflect and reassess. That's what weekends are for, Snowflake. If you want to run a successful business, you can expect your free weekends and evenings, for that matter, to disappear. Number three, spend more time with family. Now, now I sympathize with this one. I really do. But if this is the main reason that you are starting a business, you failed before you've even started. You'll be spending less time with your family, not more. You'll find out very quickly that clients talk a big game when it comes to work-family balance, but when they want something, they want it. And they don't want to hear about your daughter's birthday. And yes, this is hypocritical, but they're not wrong in wanting what they want. They are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Number four, make the world a better place. Now, what if you mean is actually make the world a better place and not just appear to make the world a better place, this is just fine. Focus on building your business, hiring more people, providing livelihoods to their families, and better services to your clients. If you do these things, you will in fact make the world a better place. If you focus on anything else except those things, you'll be making the world and most likely your life a worse place. As you may know, I'm not a big fan of the Sensor Brothers, but if you would ask Mark Zuckerberg when he was starting Facebook, if any of these reasons were the driving force for his company, he probably would have nodded and smiled and appeared to agree while inside he was laughing his ass off. As much as I may hate his politics, Zuckerberg is a fierce competitor. This is the only way to succeed in business. Capitalism, on the whole, is not a zero-sum game. Capitalism succeeds, and forgive me as I lapse briefly into corporate speak here, but capitalism succeeds by making the pie bigger, not by cutting it up into smaller and smaller pieces. But on the front lines as an entrepreneur, you succeed by beating your competition, plain and simple. You succeed by working harder, thinking more clearly, persisting when others give up, and being there when your client needs you no matter what. Does this guy look like he's going to be there for his clients no matter what? A while back, I was talking to one of my wife's friends about the business that I owned at the time, and I started to ask him about his goals and aspirations and what he wanted out of his career. And he paused, and then he said to me, I want to continue to be someone else's problem. 
Now, at the time, that struck me as a horrifically limiting point of view. But, but as time has gone on, I've come to see that while it was not the right choice for me, there was wisdom to be found in that statement. This person knew what they wanted, and they knew what they did not want, and they were making the choice that was best for them. Snowflakes, do us all a favor, and yourselves, actually. If you're not willing to do what it takes to make a business succeed, just remain someone else's problem. We've had it up to here with the bailouts. And this phenomenon has future trillion dollar snowflake bailout written all over it.